Hey guys, it's Gordon, aka Eeyore Equus, with another PixInsight tutorial. This one on creating mosaics in PixInsight using Gradient Merge Mosaic and Star Alignment. Now this certainly is not the only, the first, or even the best tutorial on the subject that you'll find online. It is, however, hopefully a fairly simple one that's fairly easy to follow along with, and it's applicable to two-panel to a hundred-panel mosaics. And, and hopefully it will, without a whole lot of hassle, allow you to produce some very pleasing and, and smooth transition mosaics with PixInsight. So we're going to start today, we're going to use uh, some data I shot recently of Sharpless 91, some hydrogen alpha data of that target. And we're going to, we've got them up here. These are just basically the raw integrations. These are the, just the straight stacks out of PixInsight uh, image integration. They are still linear. Nothing's been done to them yet. And we're going to start there with our two panels. First thing we're going to do here is we're going to crop these two panels. Now, we want to make sure what we're looking for when we crop, especially when we crop mosaic panels, is we're looking for these edges here where signal falls off, where we've got weak signal because, you know, maybe dithering frame moved a little bit, shot it over a couple of nights, your framing was two or three pixels off, whatever the issue is. Uh, pretty much any integration is going to have these areas over at the edge, edges of the image or edges of the integration. That's what we want to get rid of with, with a cropping tool. Now I'm going to use dynamic crop. You could use, you know, the regular crop tool, whatever you wanted to. As long, uh, I've even seen people crop things with pixel math. I, I'm I'm a math nerd, but I'm I'm not that much of a math nerd. So let's see here. We're going to go grab these. Let's try to get as much of that big fat star there as we can, and we're going to try to crop these. We want to get rid of these these kind of stair step areas because we've got several tools we're going to use today. Uh, especially gradient merge mosaic that really just do not like these low signal areas where they step off the, the, in this stair step fashion like this. It really kind of throws them for a loop. So we want to make sure that we've got nice clean edges as it were. Uh, now you do not have to do this. In this particular case I'm going to apply exactly the same crop to both frames. Now I want to make it clear, like I said, you do not have to have the same crop on both frames. Uh, I'm going to do it specifically to demonstrate something about another tool here in a minute, Linear Fit, uh, and it's going to require that these two frames be the same size and same shape. So like I said, it's not required for the mosaic. I'm just doing it to demonstrate one particular behavior of Linear Fit, which we'll get to in a minute. So we've cropped these. Next thing we want to do is we want to handle any background gradients from light pollution, the moon, whatever you may have. Uh, now, you know, you can you can combat these a little bit, uh, especially with, and, and really, honestly, one of the biggest things you can do for your mosaics comes in the acquisition phase, which is to try to gather as many frames of each target kind of simultaneously in the same conditions. In other words, don't try to shoot all of frame one over three or four nights and then go to frame two over the next three or four nights. You're going to get different conditions, different seeing, different transparency, different gradients from the moon, so on and so forth. So try to shoot, say, in this case, what I did is I used Sequence Generator Pro and I said, hey, shoot three frames of number one and three, then three frames of number two. And then the next night I said, do three frames of number two first, then three frames of number one. So I tried to kind of mix and match and merge them all together as best I could so that both panels had as many similar frames shot in similar conditions, uh, you know, as I could realistically arrange. Uh, that being the case, I don't have a whole lot of gradients here, at least that aren't, you know, kind of consistent across. I've got a little bit uh, over here from some uh, areas that didn't flat out quite well. So I'm just going to run a quick ABE process on here, automatic background uh, extractor. Obviously, if you've got more severe gradients, you're going to want to pay more attention to this, spend a little more time on it. But for the purposes of our tutorial here, this will do a fine job of just kind of demonstrating that it is at this point in the workflow that you're going to handle any background issues that you may have. All right, that pretty much has our frames prepared, or at least as kind of pre as prepared as they need to be, uh, except that we want to kind of we want to fit them together. We want to we, we want to kind of match the intensities of these frames best we can. Now we accomplish some of that with that technique I talked about a little earlier of trying to mix and match the panels on the same night. You know, trying to get uh, similar types of exposures and similar numbers of frames in the same conditions. That helps quite a bit with intensity matching. 
Uh, however, you're still going to want to do use some tool to try to match intensities as close as you can. Now, the normal tool that we think of for this is linear fit, and linear fit's a fine tool. I don't have any, any real problem with linear fit. It does, however, for gradients have one, well, two significant drawbacks. Uh, the first drawback is kind of a technical one in that uh, it, it will tend to raise the background, the mean background of an image to match the other panel. Well, that's fine, except that gradient merge mosaic requires, and you'll see the slider here in a minute, requires that areas of an image with no data be pure black, be zero. Now you could adjust that with a slider, but then you get to have all kinds of fun trying to figure out where is the no data area is in your image and this, that, and the other. So linear fit has that kind of shortcoming for for uh, mosaics, but the other one is a much bigger one. Linear fit does a great job if you've got, say, a hydrogen alpha frame of panel one and an O3 frame of panel one. It'll match those two together just fine. What it's not always real happy about, however, is matching two frames that have different data in them because it's expecting the, it's expecting the overall signal to be the same, and it's not going to be. And so the end result you get, although, you know, we want to match these frames up is we want to get their intensity as close as we can because we're going to mosaic them. Well, you try to do that with linear fit. You say, well, we're going to reference uh, HA panel 1 over here, and we're going to try to match intensity in HA panel 2, and you get this. No fun. Um, <laughs> that really doesn't help us a whole lot. There's a stretch. There's an aggressive stretch. It just, you know, we've, we've basically slaughtered a vast majority of the data that was in this frame at all. So, you know, linear fit doesn't really accomplish what we're trying to accomplish, which is to match the signal intensity here of these two images, even though they technically have different data in them. Uh, there is, however, an alternative. Uh, there is a gentleman by the name of David Alt who has created a, a kind of alternative linear fit, which he calls DNA linear fit. I will put a uh, link in the description of this video to this script for PixInsight, but once you install it, it'll show up in utilities called DNA Linear Fit, and it does a wonderful job of doing exactly what we're trying to do. We're going to reference view one, our target's going to be view number two, and bam. And you're going to see it, it sometimes doesn't look like it did a whole lot, but if you go back and forth and blink back between the two, you can see that it did actually adjust it. And, you know, frame two was a little darker than frame one, and now that's that that that's much improved. So, like I said, sometimes you know if you're close already, it's not going to look like it did a whole lot. But trust me, it, it's really going to help you out here down the road. All right. So we have cropped and handled background, and then matched intensities as best we can on these two panels. That pretty much has them prepared. That's that that's the fa the step we want to get them to. It's where we want to get them before we start mosaicing them. So we're going to save these panels real quick in a separate area. I'm going to call the folder prepped and I'm going to save these prepped frames off over here to the side. Okay, come on Pix Insight. There we go. It's got a billion and a half properties to write with that X as if format, doesn't it? Alright. And we'll let that one save. And I forgot to turn my phone off. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, good deal. Now, we saved our prep in integrations here. We're, we're kind of ready to start mosaicing. So the first process we're going to use is star alignment. Now, this was the, the process du jour uh, for making mosaics for a long time until the gradient merge mosaic tool came, came along. And to be perfectly honest, it can do an acceptable job if you've got some nicely matched frames. You're going to see the results of this one really don't look too bad. So our first step here is we're going to we're going to pick one of our views as a reference image. It really doesn't matter which one. So we'll just go with number 1. We're going to change our working mode to register union mosaic. And most of the advice you'll find online says that you should enable frame ad frame adaptation. To be perfectly honest, it doesn't matter because we're not really going to use the results of this too much, uh, at least in terms of our actual mosaic. However, you know, kind of old habits die hard, so we're going to go ahead and enable it. And hey, it may give us a suitable result. We may be able to skip gradient merge mosaic altogether, so it's at least worth the old college try. Whoops, how about we drag this over to the frame we actually want to mosaic here, and it's going to give us a nice two-panel mosaic of these two frames. 
All right, well, let's see how it did. Okay, that actually doesn't look too bad. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a fall off right that you can kind of see through here. And if we stretch this very aggressively, you'll actually be able to go up here to the top. And you'll see there's, there's part of that seam coming down right there. And we've got a little bit of, uh, uh, it's not too bad here. We do have a little bit of distortion, it looks like. Where did I see that? Probably like kind of around, it. oh yeah, off in here somewhere, a little distortion to the stars. So, uh, you know, star alignment did not do really a bad job. This would be really a pretty solid mosaic to uh, just as a starting point, especially stretched at a reasonable level. It's really difficult to see any of those flaws in it. So this would be a, a pretty good starting point. However, in the interest of thoroughness, and because this tutorial is called, you know, making a mosaic with gradient merge mosaic, let's continue. So, we've got this. Now, all of this mosaic is going to do for us is it's going to be a template. This is nothing more than a tool to tell gradient merge mosaic, this is how big our finished image is. This is what we're going to register against. So, we're going to just set this guy off over here to the side. And we're going to close these. Remember, we saved them here a little while ago. And now this time, we're going to use this mosaic we just created as our reference image for another round of star alignment. This time, we're going to do regular re uh, register match image. It is important to this time that we enable frame adaptation. So it should be you know, still enabled from previously. If it's not, enable it. Uh, but it is important that we do enable it for this step. Now this time we're going to add to files just like we would if we were doing star alignment on a, a set of raw frames. And the files we're going to add are our prepped frames. So we're going to add them. And we're going to tell the output to go over here to, whoops, I was already there, registered panels. Now what this is going to do is this is basically going to create two images that are the size and shape of this mosaic each one kind of half covered. There's going to be one in here where we've got panel one here and a bunch of black space over here. That's why that black space was important from the, the, the linear fit discussion. And then the next one's going to be number two. And it's going to be over here with a bunch of black space over here. So we're going to run that. And the PixInsight star alignment process has gotten slower of late, but the frame adaptation is much, much better than it used to be. So uh, I'll, I'll accept that trade. I'll accept smoother, uh, uh, smoother matching and better intensity matching in star alignment for a little bit slower process. Okay, that's done. Let's go see what we got out of that. So here are our two registered panels. And we'll open those up. And like we discussed, we should be see two big rectangles, each one about half full. And you can tell there's number one, and here's going to be number two right here. And we take a look at them, and sure enough, even with an aggressive stretch, you can see that's still a, a solid black background. That is exactly what we're going to want for gradient merge mosaic. It's going to care about that area right there because it knows, hey, if that's no data, I don't want to try to to you know marry those two up. I stop trying to compare these two when I get to zeros. So that's why that's important. All right, so we don't really need these. We just wanted to take a look at them to see what they look like. We can get rid of our template. Now, if you had more than one panel here, you would basically repeat these processes. You would do the first star alignment, the, the register union mosaic on panel one, then, then match two to that result, match three to that result, match four, and you would keep growing and growing and growing this larger and larger template. And then once you had done that, you would use the template as a reference image and then load all of your prepped individual frames and you would get you know six eight ten of these whatever it was each one with a small corner that had that frames data in it but for now since we only have two frames we're done with star alignment we're going to go hit gradient merge mosaic we can close our template and we're going to go get our registered panels that we saved and for type of combination, uh, average is the default and usually works fairly well. Uh, I start with average. Now, to be, to be honest, I, I have noticed that the more nebulosity or dust type things you have near the seams of the mosaic, 
the more likely you are to find overlay working better for you. All right, so now like I said, average is the default works fine in most cases, probably the best choice to start with. But if there's lots and lots of nebulosity and good juicy dust and all of that, especially on the seams of your panels, you may want to lean toward overlay. I like to start with a shrink radius of 5, and I like to jack the feather radius all the way up to about 30 as a starting point. Again, these are just kind of rough starting points. You can play with them. You can move them around as you need to. The shrink radius is basically going to handle uh, stars that may be a little distorted or stars that may be a, a, you know that may be the wrong shape or they may look a little crunchy on the edges feather radius kind of smooths the transition from one panel to the next if the closer your frames are matched the lower feather radius you can get away with but I like to start with 5 and 30 that usually does a pretty good job we're gonna go ahead and apply the gradient merge mosaic process and it does take a while to chew through some data. Wait till you get to about a six or eight frame mosaic. You'll, you, you can get up and go get lunch and a cup of coffee and probably dessert as well. So, all right, we're at the, we're at the solver on channel zero, so it's not going to be too much longer. And magic has occurred. And here is our result. All right. Uh, looks about the same at the at the moderate stretch, but let's take a look at the aggressive stretch. You'll see now that that line right there that was there at this uh, overlap gone now completely. Uh, the the streaking we kind of had through here earlier, the distortion that was happening through here is much cleaned up. Uh, and really, even at an aggressive stretch, we can really kind of go down and pixel peep on this thing, and there's just not. There's just not a seam or a, a line or anything to be found. It's uh, it's a pretty clean mosaic. Actually, it looks like there might be a scotch. I can't tell if that's just a coincidence of where that's a lack of stars. There might be a tiny one there. Sure is hard to tell, though, and, and it would be next to impossible to identify at a more rational stretch. So what we've produced here is a, a, a pretty clean mosaic with very few steps. So in review, you're going to crop your images down. Remember, they don't have to be the si same size and shape. I merely did that to demonstrate that peculiarity of linear fit. You're going to handle any background issues that you have. You're going to grab the DNA linear fit script from David Alt. Again, the uh, link to that should be in the description of the video. You're going to save your prepped integrations. And then you're going to run star alignment in register union mosaic mode and align all of your frames to each other to come up with that one large template. That template is then going to be used with star alignment in register match images mode. Each frame is going to be here, one of your target images. They're going to be saved off to a separate location. They're going to be the big black rectangles, which is one corner or one part filled with that particular frame. And those are the sources for gradient merge mosaic. An average combination, shrink radius of 5, feather radius of 30. Those are kind of good starting points, certainly worth playing with those. Uh, if you encounter issues with your mosaic, they can, they can certainly help clear those up, but that's a nice starting point. And then just do a, a, an aggressive STF and take a look and do, really do some pixel peeping, peeping to make sure that you haven't left any lines. Hope this was useful to you. If you have questions or comments, certainly uh, leave them in the comments section below, and we will see you next time. Take care.